Okay, this tutorial is going to be all about lighting. Light probes, reflection probes, baked versus mixed lighting, real-time lights, all lighting fun. So let's get right into it. So you got your basic uh, house or world, or this is going to be just a box picture of being a room or something like that. You got your directional lighting outside, which you can turn off and turn on. You can click on it there. You can set it the intensity and stuff you can actually totally turn it off and then you won't have any directional lighting in your world anymore but you're like oh well it's lit up fine and everything but a little bit dim the problem is once you actually set stuff to static like you're supposed to to be able to get the light right stuff set it to static and you actually bake your lighting we'll get into that in a second all of a sudden it's gotta get pitch black in here and you're not gonna be able to see anything it's gonna be really dark, still light out here, but nothing in here. So let's undo that for right now. So we can see what we're doing. That's why I tend to bake the lighting once after I get all the stuff in. So go to whatever lights you have. You can either go up to game object, import, directional spotlight or however you wanna do it. You put it in there. Um, I like to use assets to have prefabs. You can do it either way. Um, so let's do import light. Let's do point light. Those are the most common ones. You can go up here and change the range. That's far out how out. You can see. You can see right here. You can even drag it with a little dot. See how far it goes. Um, this is set to real time. Pretty much never use real time lights unless you're trying to do effects with them or you really need something special either do mixed if you want to be able to turn on and off or adjust it but most of the time always do baked so much better it looks a lot better doesn't hurt performance um, but for this example I'm going to use one of the prefabs a little bit easier so I'm going to drag in one of these prefabs let's get it to roughly where we want it drag it up to the ceiling here it's usually pretty easy to see when it touches the ceiling. And there we go. Drag it down to about right there. It's all set. Let's see what it's set to. It's set to 10 range. Let's do a little more. Let's we'll set it to 5. Intensity. Set it to baked. You can go in here and do temperature control. Set it to however you want it. I usually use this. Set it to a little bit of warm. Now, if you want all your lights to stay the same, if you're going to use multiple of these lights, don't drag another asset on there. That adds unnecessary size to your world. It also makes it harder because it's hard to get everything perfect. Just go up here, duplicate. Now you get another one. Drag it to where you want it. Go to the main one again. Duplicate again. Boom. Drag it to where you want it. Now you got a couple lights there. Ah, this side. I'm going to do a little bit different style of lights. I'm going to go over here and choose this one. Drag it here. And good enough. Let's set this one to five. Set this to more of a bluish light. And then set it to baked. Duplicate and drag it over. You don't have to duplicate the first one. I'll duplicate this one. Uh, duplicate drag it over there we go we got warm lights more blue lights over here now if we just go in here set all the cubes the house to static boom now all your static that's a key tip why I said organize your stuff under a folder because you can click on the house and set everything to static in one click and the best way to do your lighting baking is make sure you go up to tools I mean window rendering light settings then you'll have this tab that you can put over here leave all this stock in here don't mess with it I've seen people go in here and change this to enlighten and GPU it seems to make it worse um, go down here and hit generate this is a small roll it's gonna take no time and then it's gonna generate the lighting you go oh looks pretty good 
but as soon as you actually put something in here, like an avatar, it's just not going to look right. And also, it's not going to change the lighting as you walk around. And if you have something reflective, it's not going to be refl reflective. It's not going to look right. I can even show that by bringing in uh, some assets. Let's bring in this uh, lion here. Let's upsize it. Let's uh, turn it around. Boom. Let's put the lion here in the center. Set up the static. Let's get an asset on it. Let's uh, put a texture, something shiny on it. Let's get this marble on it here. Let's get normal map on it just to make it look better. Let's get this thing nice and reflective. Let's get baked lighting again real quick. Set it to static. Okay, so you can see it doesn't really look like it's reflecting stuff as well as it should um, that's because there's no light probes or reflection probes in here so how you do those you go up to uh, game object you go up to lights let's uh, add in uh, the light probes boom you gotta get this thing in here looks kind of weird don't really know what to do with it so what you do is go over to an inspector click on edit light probes now it will let you move these yellow balls around. I always try to get this in the center first. So I'll uncheck that so you can get it in the center there and about center. Doesn't have to be perfect. So now we can go in here. Now that's on edit mode, you can click and drag. So you can highlight them. And you can drag them off to the side here. I get them just inside the wall, just like that so they're barely just touching the wall these I'm just gonna get rid of because I'm gonna duplicate across the whole wall let's get these out to the outside what I don't know what I did right there oh I'm gonna click at it there we go let's get these off to the outside here doing it this way is much easier. Let's get these to the top. Let's get these to the bottom. Okay. So now these hit Control D, duplicate, drag down. Usually I do them space apart, about like that. Drag down. There we go. Same thing across. D duplicate. D duplicate. Duplicate. Now, if you have a really big area and that's taking too long, don't forget you can go back and highlight all these. Duplicate. And now you get a whole wall you can drag. And there you go. See how fast I did that? Now, we got to get these all across the room. Go outside. You can click and drag all those. Duplicate. And you get lined up with the wall so you can see what you're doing. And again, it's taking too long. Boom, highlight them all, duplicate. There you go, duplicate. It's not going to quite reach correctly, so I'm going to do this. Highlight that smaller batch. Duplicate. And duplicate. Now I can come inside and do the final thing. They don't have to be spaced perfect. They just need to be spaced semi-evenly and across the whole room. So it looks like a big mess of wires. Now if you're doing a huge room and it starts to get too crazy, you can click in here and go turn off wireframe and that usually will make it run a lot smoother. But there you go. Light probes are done. They're that simple. Um, and as soon as you click off, go back to the house, they disappear. This will still stay there. But uh Let's rebake the lighting, see what changes.
looks a little better, looks a little more even. It's not going to change too much because it's more reflective. That helps more of avatars, their reflection probes. I mean, the light probes. Um, let's get a reflection probe in here. So go up to game, light, reflection probe. Let's get this thing roughly centered. There we go. Now you go over here to these little uh, edit boundary volume and a reflection probe. Boom, you'll be able to see the walls. Now you can click on these little dots here. Bring it just so it touches the wall. Boom, there you go. Do the same thing to all four sides, just so it touches the wall. Same thing with the ceiling. Drag this down, touches the ceiling, touches the wall, touch the wall, and floor, touch the floor. That's it. Now you don't even have to worry about clicking bake here. Some other settings here, shadow distance, if you've got a bunch of different rooms, you can lower this down so stuff doesn't overlap. I really don't mess with any other settings in here. Now, if you're doing water, something special, you can up the resolution to like 256 or 512, and it'll make it look a little bit more crisper. Most of the time, 2 and 128, just fine. So when you bake the lighting, generate lighting, it will automatically bake the reflection probe in the room. And then stuff will actually reflect correctly. You can see how it looks like it's reflecting more accurate with the blue a little bit more on that side probably if I change the lights around a little bit so let's see I'm gonna highlight all of these lights here blue 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 I'm actually gonna go in here turn that off let's change this to a different color wheel let's actually change it to blue light let's turn up the intensity out oh, of range is not that far that's probably part of the problem let's change that to eight let's go over to these lights let's set this to more of a green change that to seven now when we rebake the lighting let's see what we get that shows it off a lot better. I really see what it's doing now. The reason why it looks like it's, why is that off even? Well, because if you look at this way, if you come from this way, it's being blocked by the butt of the lion. So it's actually showing the blue. So it's showing all the reflection correctly. Because if I like rotate the lion some, I'm gonna rotate it with this tool here. Do that. Let's rebake the lighting and see what happens. Boom, changes. Change it this way. Changes again. So that's where reflection probe and light probes make a huge difference. Um, being able to actually accurately show the lighting in a room. Hope you enjoy.